Tony Durkins, the author of The Mosquito Book. Tony is one of the duct tape guys. We yep. have had both Tony on before and also his co-writer for the duct tape books, Tim. And Tony has put together a little book, kind of like the duct tape book, but this one has a lot of information in it. It isn't just goofy stuff. Exactly. That's that's. I was trying to get a little something different. You know, it's fun writing those, those duct tape books, and they're, they're fun and entertaining, but this is something you could really use. Right. And, and the reason um, I did it, uh, you know, living in Minnesota, Lots of mosquitoes and a short summertime window of opportunity to get out there and do things like fish and canoe and golf and all those things, hike, all those things you love to do in the summertime. And I wanted to uh, to know how, you know, to av avoid them as much as possible. And my co-author on this, Scott Anderson, is a military man. He flies F-16s to the Air National Guard. And his, uh, his theory that what he learned uh, in military training is to defeat your enemy, you must first know your enemy. Yeah. So we sought to, to find out as much as we could about mosquitoes in order to uh, figure out how to avoid them. Yeah. Well, let's tell us about them, okay? Like, for instance, how did mosquitoes get their name? Mosqui the, the name, it, it comes um, from a lot of uh, different backgrounds, a Latin background and everything. Actually, um, if I can find it here, in, in, uh, in medieval England, they, they used to call it the midge. The midge? Uh, but the mosquito didn't appear until the 16th century. Um, Musca is Latin for fly. Uh, Latin became mosca in Spanish and Portuguese. What's interesting about it, though, uh, the word musket is also borrowed from Latin, the same root. Hmm. Um, and with it, it also means bolt for a catapult or small artillery piece, uh, so which is interesting because little fly, um, the musca in okay. Latin. Musca means fly and right, ito means little. From a right. crossbow. So it's a little fly. Right. Uh, which is appropriate enough since uh, both the crossbow projectiles and mosquitoes fly, buzz, and draw blood. Mm -hmm. Are they called other things, too? I mean, if we uh, use the word fly, because some of us say, oh, there's that one of those flies. Right, well, they, they actually are flies, scientifically. Um, flies that, that have a proboscis that takes blood. But, uh, like, the English call them uh, gnats. Oh, so gnats are mosquitoes. Right, mm -hmm. um, in, in England. It's like, you know, they call the trunk the boot, and, and right. uh, trucks, lollies, and elevators lift. But, you know, these, these people drink their beer warm. So <laughs> got to be careful. The French, the word for mosquito in French, I don't know the word exactly, but it, it also means cousin. <laughs> so, so, you know, leave it up to the, the French to, uh, to pick a name that, um, you know, consider their relatives annoying little bloodsuckers. <laughs> Our guest is Tony Durkins. He's the author of The Mosquito Book. It's a great Father's Day idea if you're interested in it. You can call 800-678-7006. It's a toll-free number if you're interested in The Mosquito Book. 800-678-7006. And, Tony, is this available in bookstores, too? Yes, yeah, it's available in most bookstores. Um, and you can ask, well, what's great about this, it only costs six ninety five. Great. You can get that in a card for Father's Day <laughs> and still have change back from your pen. Tony, what are mosquitoes good for? I mean, is there a reason why we, why do we have mosquitoes? That's, you know, that's one of the most common questions we came across. When, when we did the research for this book, we asked people, what do you want to know about mosquitoes? And that was, that was one of the questions a lot of people asked. They, um, they actually, they don't live off your blood. They live off a of flower nectar. And because of that, uh, they... Excuse me? Go ahead. Oh, because of that, they, they help pollinate plants. Of course, they're a large part of uh, the food chain, a lot of, lot of other insects. Mosquitoes birds, help pollinate? They help pollinate. Oh. Yep. Because they take the nectar and they move on to the next place for a meal. You know, they're, they're transmitting uh, um, what, the, what the plants need. But why do they come after our blood, then? What, well, that's, um, that's for mating or uh, reproductive purposes. You know, only... <laughs> Pardon me? <laughs> exactly. Only the female mosquito is the bloodsucker. Uh -huh. uh, I, I'm not going to comment. I will make no comment on that. No, years of sensitivity <laughs> training. But um, what she's doing, she's taking the blood for protein for her eggs. Okay. So every time... You so she the, already has the eggs in her. The eggs are in her. She's sucking out the blood to try right. to help her eggs grow. To help her eggs grow. For, so when she does mate and, and there's, you know, the, the male you know, does his part, um, they, they'll, they will grow off with the blood. It helps uh, helps provide protein for them. And if folks want to know the grossest part of the book... What's that? The grossest part of your book, Tony? What is that? When the female gets too much blood, she sucks too much blood, what happens? Well, if, um, if, if you cut off the receptors to her stomach or you won't let her pull out of your arm, she bursts. Yeah. Yeah. And she actually, well... 
Also, I think you're, she actually kind of goes to the bathroom on your arm a little bit, right? Oh, that yeah, exactly. That's a little that's a little ballast. If they've taken too much blood and uh, and can't fly, right? She because they're way too much. Um, she releases some ballast. Basically, they piddle on you. Gross. Yeah, it's pretty... that's that's more than we wanted to know. More on than Winsenberg we wanted to know. Well, weekend. that's the whole idea. The, the, the subtitle of the book, of course, is more than you'll ever need to that's know. Right. About controlling, repelling, yeah. enduring, and destroying the most annoying little blood suckers on the planet. Jay is up first on Winsenberg on the weekend. Hi, Jay. Do you have a mosquito story for us? Oh, well, actually, it's not my story. It's my wife's story. Okay. Uh, she's not here right now. Um, she. Her family moved up to uh, Red Lake area. Up in up Minnesota. Up in northern Minnesota. Yeah. Sure. Lots of mosquitoes. Yeah. Lots of mosquitoes. They had a little Just farm. And their neighbor ho- farmed with horses. They said that the mosquitoes were so, were so thick on the back of the horse that when the driver would slap the reins, the back of the horse would turn red. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. From, all, from popping from all, the mosquitoes? Yeah, from popping them all. Yeah. Yeah. Of they, course. You know, being up there, there's not a whole lot to do. And they'd <laughs> yeah, lay awake at night, and, when you're driving the <laughs> and uh, they'd watch the mosquitoes crawl through the screens. Oh, oh man! Yeah, it's pretty Trying bad. They're tenacious. There. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. You know, up in the up in the Arctic is where you find the most mosquitoes. What? Yeah, exactly. In the in the tropics, they have the most species, but the by sheer volume, it's up in the Arctic, and they've spotted swarms uh, by helicopter that they estimate are the size of small. States. Wow. So that's why they're so bad up in northern Minnesota. Yeah, they'll take down a caribou. Huh. Thanks, Jay. That's a good story. Oh, you're welcome. I appreciate it. And stay tuned to WHO. Right now, Tony Durkins is here. He's the author of the Mosquito Book. And let's go to Mark from Ankeny. Mark, what's your mosquito story? Uh, we had taken a uh, missions trip to Lake of the Woods in Canada one year. And one Fourth of July weekend, we all went to bed. And the sun went down at about 11 o'clock at night. And as we're laying there, we could hear the mosquitoes buzzing outside the cabin. Oh. And somehow the door had gotten open a little oh bit. Oh, my Ooh. gosh. And uh, my friend's son passed right out. He's a little boy. He had passed right out. He's about 10. And uh, I laid there for a couple hours, and I looked down with my flashlight, and I looked at my friend's son's face, and it was covered with a bunch of mosquitoes that had bellied up to the blood bar of his face. Oh. And it was terrible, so we brushed all the mosquitoes off, and and uh, the next day, his head, or his face, swelled up I so bad bet. he couldn't hardly see. Did yeah. They, what they used to treat it, do you know? Uh, he had just uh, left the kid. We were out there in the middle of nowhere. Oh, so you didn't have any place no, to go. No, we didn't have anywhere to go, oh. so we just kind of watched him real close. The next yeah. couple of days, his face went down, but... Of course, he had the book. Excuse me? If you if had you the had book, the you'd book, know how to got all treat it. Right. Yeah, I was, I was thinking that myself. Yeah. So I will listen to the end of the okay. show. Okay, great. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. A good story. Uh, Tony, what would you do if you're stuck out in the woods and you get bit like that? Just there, There's different things you you can do, of course. I mean, if you're not stuck in the woods, uh, you know, Benadryl, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But uh, we've got, uh, the book is full of all sorts of methods. Um, one of the, one of the, Ones you could do anywhere, uh, especially, you know, he's out in the woods, he's camping, get, get some hot water going. Yeah. Over the fire, get it as hot as you can stand. Cloth, slap it on the bite, okay? The itching will intensify for a few seconds, and then it should stop. What I believe is going on is it's acting like a, kind of like a capillary method there. But wouldn't you use cold water to stop the swelling? Um, not really. See, the swelling's caused by what happens, okay, when the mosquito goes in, this is something else that's not too pleasant. It's got to get the blood flowing. It's got that tiny little stinger, right? Yeah. So it injects you with an anticoagulant in its saliva. It spits in you. Mm. Okay, it piddles on you, it spits in you, it takes your blood. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty disgusting thing. And thanks for being our guest today, exactly. Tony Dickens. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that saliva contains an anticoagulant, but that also you're having an allergic reaction to that. Yeah. So the swelling isn't because it's inflamed tissue like when you injure something. You know. Okay. So it's it's a but you know some people put ice on it. Yeah. Uh, it'll reduce the so you're inflammation put, and put swelling. Hot water bit, on but it's cloth. not going to stop okay. itching. All right, Dan, you're up next with our guest Tony Durkins. Dan, what's your uh, story about mosquitoes? Well, um, I played uh, football up at Iowa Lakes uh, Community College in Esterville when I was um, a little bit younger, and we had practices. And that year, the mosquitoes were really, really bad. And our coach, you know, he he didn't have a lot of sympathy for us, and. Um, We'd have to go out there, and we'd be doing our push-ups, and the mosquitoes would be just swarming on us, and we couldn't mm-hmm. bat them away because, you know, we couldn't stop doing our push-ups or our conditioning. So all, the, all these football players are out there, and they, they'd be just, you know, you'd look down, your arms would be just covered with them. Oh. Like, would be covered with them, so. Yikes. Ever since I've had to think about mosquitoes. So now what do you do when you see a mosquito? 
Um, I try to stay away from them. But, yeah, <laughs> don't they're really thick up, up, up in northwest Iowa. Come on, a big, tough football player like you. I hate them. You're yeah. scared of a little mosquito? I'm not scared. They're just very annoying. I'd <laughs> yeah, rather be out of shape than covered with mosquitoes. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Dan. That's a good story. Thank you. Our guest is Tony Durkins. It's the Mosquito Book. If you're interested in getting a copy, it's at bookstores, or you can call 800-678-7006. And this sounds like a great Father's Day gift, Tony. Yeah, it's perfect, because it, it's great. It'll fit in your golf bag, in the tackle box, up at the cabin. And it's an easy read, too. Easy. Oh, and it's a fun one, Yeah. 800-678-7006. Let's go to Gail. Hi, Gail. Do you have a story about mosquitoes? Yes, I do. Good. We have a cabin in northern Minnesota, mm -hmm. and uh, my husband always said that there were two sizes of mosquitoes there. Those who came in through the screen, and the ones who just opened the door and walked right. in. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah I've, seen them the si I've seen them the size of small camels. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah, they, they, uh, just the other day, they're, they're, one was carrying off a Labrador. I can believe it. Yeah, they're, just, <laughs> yeah. they're huge, they're thick. There's a lot of them, though. That there are these great big mosquito-like um, things that they fly really slowly and they never seem to go after you mm -hmm. and they're they're in the same family but they don't stink mm -hmm. uh, some people call them daddy long legs but some mm -hmm. people also call certain spiders daddy long legs now gail if you have a cabin up there mm -hmm. what do you do to keep the mosquitoes out well <laughs> it's a thing of, of trying to keep the the uh, doors or the screen doors shut mm -hmm. you know sometimes it gets so hot you have to open the doors and windows mm -hmm. but we try and keep the screens in good repair we have one of those bug zappers mm -hmm. and uh, that works to some degree yeah can i can i can i clue you in on something mm -hmm. yes that bug zapper is probably hurting more than it's helping oh really yeah let me explain um the mosquitoes are attracted to your smell yeah okay the the lactic acids in your sweat the carbon dioxide of your breath that's what's drawing them there they also do um you know become attracted to that ultraviolet light so Mm -hmm. It's nighttime. They're flying around. They see the light. They come to the light. Mm -hmm. Then they smell you. Mm -hmm. They turn away from the light. Hmm. There's they, more they would rather the attraction is much stronger mm -hmm. um, to your smell than it is to the light. Yeah, but Tony, what about the people who say, "Hey, I see hundreds of mosquitoes sitting there in that bug zapper. They're dead. It kills them." It it kills them. It kills a lot of other insects that eat mosquitoes. Um, they've done tests that said that only about. Uh, five percent of the catch on those is mosquitoes, and only mm. half of them are the females. Wow! So oh, you're okay. saying it defeats the purpose almost. It, it's basically, especially if you're barbecuing outdoors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're coming after the light, yeah. and then they're um, they're going after your, yeah. your guests. Well, mm -hmm. thanks, Gail, for your story. Well, one other thing. Sure. We found that uh, taking a a, um, a dryer softener mm -hmm. um, and rubbing that over the the skin that's exposed. Yep. Helps. You mean after you've been bitten, just take a sheet? No, no, before. Talk, as a repellent. We've, that's in the book, yeah, but too. Yeah, those have uh, smells on them. Bounce fabric softener sheet. Yeah, but they have mm -hmm. smells. They have fragrance on them. And you said that that's fragrance, att fragrance attracts attract the mosquitoes. You know, we, we say in the book, don't wear perfumes and stuff, but apparently the makeup of, of some fabric softeners masks the scent. It's a trend that started in Florida. Uh, a lot of people wearing them down there. I have a different theory on that. Um, in Florida, there's a lot of retired folks, a lot of older gentlemen over the age of 65. With Tony... Tony, I moved here from Florida. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> well, but bear with me on the theory then. <laughs> um, a lot of folks, you know, a lot of older gentlemen, were, they're wearing white shoes and matching white belts. That's true. Yeah. What I'm thinking someday is if some, somebody got the dryer sheet and was left in his pants after the laundry. <laughs> somebody saw it, pointed at it. Now, older folks are wise. They've lived on the planet a long time. They know a lot. Smart. Um, didn't want to get caught in a fashion faux pas and said, oh, no, that's to ward off the mosquitoes. That's funny. And everybody's wearing them now. Thanks for calling, Gail. It really helps. It. Okay, thanks, thanks for that advice. If the guest is Tony Durkins, he's one of the duct tape guys, and he's written a great new book called The Mosquito Book. Tony, I want to give you some quick questions here, some things that uh, you mentioned in your book. Sure. Mosquitoes can actually kill a person? Mosquitoes, in fact, they do. They, uh, Because of the diseases they spread, they kill more humans than does any other creature on the planet. Oh, come on. As honest to God, they, they spread malaria and yellow fever, which kills millions every year. But now here in the United States, no, we The one thing we that. have to worry about, uh, the one disease that has a stronghold in the U.S. with mosquitoes is encephalitis. Why do certain diseases not come up to the United States from other countries? Um, because the mosquito that harbors them or that has the makeup to transfer them 
or, or in different locations, usually in the tropics. Um, they're worried, um, scientists were worried in March that perhaps a mosquito from South America might come up bringing the dengue mm -hmm. with it. But um, so far, no cases. Mosquitoes are attracted to certain colors? Yes. Um, you should wear uh, white or drab colored clothing. Wear white or... They're, they're okay. attracted to, to uh, brighter colors. Uh, less attracted to dull, more or less. But uh, never wear red. That's the big one. They like right red. Right after red. Hmm. Kind of like bulls, you know. Kind of like bulls. <laughs> it's just that, that end of the spectrum. Must be close to open. Okay. Time. So we learned something there. Yeah. Rod, you're up next with our guest, Tony Durkins. Hi, Rod. What's your story? Well, I, I've got a story that if there are any other fellow Marines out there listening to me and spent time at Paris Island, South Carolina, oh. they'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, I went to boot camp there, and what they used to do is they'd get us up in the morning. Uh, I attended boot camp during July, August, and September. <laughs> they'd get us out there about 4.30 in the morning, get us all standing in formation at attention mm -hmm. with our eyes locked straight forward, unable to move. And about that time, the uh, trained mosquitoes, <laughs> and uh, little stand fleas, they knew exactly where to go, and that wow. would be inside your ears. Yeah. Oh. And while they were inside your ears playing some kind of music, if you did swat them, I heard your last caller talking about, or one of your other callers talking about doing push-ups right. during football. You did push-ups until your arms fell off. Yeah. So, so you just lived with them. You had to live with them. Yeah. And that was part of the discipline that they tried to discipline you. So, Was there anything you could do once, I assume that they bit you and you'd have all sorts of problems, but you couldn't do it. You couldn't do anything at the time, but how about when you were done and back in the barracks or something? Could you do anything to take care of it? Well, you'd usually use uh, Q-tips or something and get in there and try to swab them out. But yeah. what, <laughs> what happened most of the time is a lot of the guys, a lot of Marines, they got this infliction where now every once in a while they start swatting like a dog. <laughs> and it wow. takes them through the rest of their life. So, Rod, are you telling me that you big, tough Marine guy, you're scared of those little mosquitoes, too? Oh, no. You just don't like <laughs> them. The sound. don't like them. Yeah. <laughs> the sound of them, when they start buzzing, that probably gets you nervous. Oh, and they get embedded sometimes in oh. the earwax, yeah. and they start doing their thing. Oh, you got to keep your ears clean then, Rod. <laughs> one, of the, one of the reasons that they're, they're after you there when you're at 4.30 in the morning do it standing out there is um, they feed mostly at dusk and dawn. Hmm. And so they've, they've got you standing in formation they're hungry, yeah. when they're hungry. Yeah, I think the United States government might have bought them and put them right over <laughs> yeah. South Thanks, Carolina, Rod. and they were trained. That's <laughs> good information, Rod. Thanks for calling. And, John, you get our last call here for the mosquito guy, Tony Durkins. What's your story, John? Yeah, the uh, Minnesota mosquitoes are really tough. The times we've been to uh, Ripley, yeah. mm -hmm. National Guard training, mm -hmm. you know, we could see a mosquito in a uh, wood tick arm wrestle for the next victim. Fight <laughs> 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 over <them>, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it in Minnesota? I mean, John, you said it. It's just so for some reason they're bad here. But I tell you, you get up to Minnesota. Is it because of those lakes, all those lakes up there, Tony? Standing water and hum high humidity. Uh, hmm. Actually, I live in Duluth, which is nice. The, the Big Lake Superior there um, kind of keeps the humidity down. So yeah. in and around the city, it's, it's pretty mosquito-free. But yeah. just a few miles outside of town, look out. Thanks, John. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, we'll be giving away the book in just a minute here. But let me ask you a couple more questions, Tony, before sure. we have to let you go. Uh, don't scratch, you say in the book. Yeah. When you get a bite, don't scratch it. Don't don't scratch that itch. You're just like I said before. You're just moving around mosquito spit. You're just spreading the stuff that's making it itch around in your arm all the more. And we appreciate you putting it in those words yeah. too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, if, think about it. Next time you're tempted to scratch that itch, visualize yeah. what you're doing. Do That'll keep you from doing now, it. Now I'd also heard. I mean, my wife, for instance, very rarely ever gets a bite, and they just eat me alive. Right. Do certain people? Uh, become more attractive to mosquitoes? Well, are, are men more attractive than women? Remember what I said uh, they're attracted to? Well, smells. Exactly. Yeah, for, from the mosquito's perspective, you either smell better or worse than your wife. <laughs> um, I think I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah, well, mosquitoes <laughs> think you smell better because they're, they're coming after you. Everybody's, diff everybody's chemical makeup's different. That's why no one single repellent works for everyone. Hmm. Okay? That's why... Um, We've got in the book so many different kind of repellents and methods, so everybody can try and find out what works for them. Is a man's scent stronger? Does he? I mean, because he sweats more or something? Uh, I don't know. You know, horses sweat, men perspire, <laughs> women glow. I've, I've seen women glow right through their shirts. So, you know. Good answer. Good answer. You should be a politician. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Where in the world do they go in the winter? Do they not die in the winter? Some of them do. Um, 
you got to remember, a lot of them, a lot of them, uh, the last thing they're going to do is reproduce, get the larvae out there, and die, so that there are more mosquitoes next year when the water comes up. Some, however, will find places like barns, basements, cracks in the wall where it's warm enough for right. them to survive. And barns is, are, are, is a good place for them because, uh, of course, there's warm-blooded animals in there. Yeah. And uh, I thought I thought the lifespan of a mosquito is only like a month or something. Thirty though. days. Thirty days. But so they're still re but they're reproducing though. If they're reproducing yeah. along the way, okay. then it continues. Yeah. Where do they go during the day? I mean, if they're up in the morning eating and then they wait to come out at night, what are they doing during the day? Somewhere dark and cool, uh, tall grass, uh, holes in trees, uh, cracks in the walls. That's why we say in the book, you know, if you've got tree stumps or tree holes, fill them up with sand. Mm -hmm. uh, eliminate the standing water from around your yard. That'll help cut yeah. down on mosquitoes. And finally, about this location thing. I mean, you mentioned before that in the Arctic, mm -hmm. there are more mosquitoes than there are down south. Now, I, I would have thought that the farther south you go and the warmer it is, the more bugs you'd get. But it seems like the way we talk today, they're bad in Iowa, they're worse in Minnesota, yeah. and they're the worst in the Arctic. In the How Arctic. come? And it's just a strange thing. That they're, they, I don't know if they're hardier or they're just more of them. For whatever reason, um, the, the deal is there's, I, I guess, well, there's more places for them to be up in the Arctic. It's, it's sparsely popula populated human, as far as humans are concerned, and there's herds and herds of deer and everything else. And also because of the moisture? I mean, there's obviously more Probably moisture, the moisture up there. It's um, drier down south. And, well, down south, one of the, it's not necessarily drier. Louisiana is a terrible place for mosquitoes. Florida is awful. Yeah. South Carolina was Any, Anywhere near water, anywhere near a coast, I yeah. suppose. Uh, but there's so many more species of animals and plants and everything in the tropics, uh, and it just goes to follow that there's more species wow. of different kinds of, of insects. 3,400 different species yeah. of mosquitoes. That's incredible. Tony, it's just filled with fun and information. You have lots of great little joke lines in here, too, but it's a great book. It's called The Mosquito Books. Tony, thanks so much for being with us Well, again. thanks for having me. It was nice to talk to you. I appreciate it, and take care of yourself up there. In I will, and uh, try to keep mosquito-free this summer. That's right.